Okay, stop me if you've heard this one before. I know the knight's identity. I have solved Deltarune's greatest mystery. It's fine. Get your eye rolls out of the way. Grab something to drink. Get some popcorn to throw at me via your screen. I get it. After years of speculation and all the theories about the knights, they just seem to run together into this ridiculous mash. And I myself have largely stayed out of the discussion because, well, I've said in the past that there wasn't enough evidence to say conclusively who the knight might be. And I've entertained multiple theories, but I only recently came across something, a throwaway line as it seems, that just made my jaw drop with a sudden realization. Mrs. Boom, the head librarian, Gerson's widow, a character that we haven't even seen yet she could very likely be the knight. Hi there, everyone. Lars here from Camille's Harem. Not just a podcast for novice writers by novice writers, but also a YouTube channel by novice writers for novice writers. Because writing is an adventure, it's more fun with friends. Now, I fully acknowledge that this theory could age worse than milk and eggs. But when I was recently replaying my way through the game and saw Birdly mention Mrs. Boom, things just suddenly clicked into place, and I'll explain to you the evidence for why I think she stands as a reasonable chance character to be Deltarune's mysterious knight, and then I'll look into what that might mean for the rest of the game's story. I will readily admit that the clues pointing to Mrs. Boom don't immediately go through her. Instead, they involve her husband and son. First off, we know that Gerson Boom was the local historian, one of the main teachers at the school, and a famous author. This guy was all over the place and was connected. We also get a strong hint at the end of Chapter 2 that he went to the Dark World as well. It's part of the monument to him in the graveyard at the bench, where he says that he would go there to fall asleep and then have these amazing adventures that he would go on and that he would write them. This sounds very reminiscent of the things that Chris and Susie have gone through. And then back in chapter one in the spare room, we see Alvin's very own picture with a ton of the old toys and stuff that were clearly the Darkeners back in chapter one. And these were Darkeners who had not interacted with a Lightener in years. That is canon. And it is highly likely that Alvin had his own Dark World adventures, possibly with his dad, considering how he refers to his dad's ability to create such amazing worlds with words. And there is even a lingering question if Father Alvin knows what is happening in hometown and is wrestling with himself to pick up his father's hammer, the Lord's hammer. Now this may all point to Gerson and Alvin somehow being responsible for what is happening in Deltarune, but unless Toby is teasing us with a fake death, I highly doubt we're going to confront Gerson Boom. Furthermore, Father Alvin's dialogue indicates that he recognizes that something is wrong within hometown, and he's wondering how he should react. These details tell me that, well, Alvin isn't the knight, and Garrison very likely isn't either. So then why Mrs. Boom? How could this sweet old librarian monster, what, what could she have to do with the destroying of both light and dark worlds? Well, dear viewer, if you're asking me that, you obviously haven't read Alcatraz versus the evil librarians. Here's the thing, we have confirmation that she's still alive. So, well, that's a plus for her being a potential candidate. But she is most likely connected way more intensely than we right now realize with all of the many schemes and things happening within hometown. Let's consider the following. The dark fountain that was opened up in the school was only opened up relatively recently. It hasn't just been hanging out there because people have gone back there multiple times. And Mrs. Boom would very likely have the keys that her late husband had to getting into the school. And the Dark Fountain in the library was also very recent, and as the head librarian, of course, she would have easy access to that space. And the night was around a long time ago in order to convey to Jevil and the others within the Dark World that they were in a game, and this broke Jevil's mind. And again, that happened a long time ago, before Chris and Susie arrived. So this would then seem to indicate that the knight is already a much 
older person than a lot of the other characters that we've so far met with in Hometown. And lastly, this might sound weird, but please bear with me about this. Toby said that the third chapter will not be very he story heavy, it will not be very story oriented, but instead focus on character building. We can expect that this will be primarily about Chris, Susie, and the Dreamer family. So we probably don't have to expect to see a bunch of stuff about the night or about what's happening between the light world and the dark world at all because it's going to be way more character focused. So if we don't see many obvious references to the night, that I would actually say is another tick towards that this could possibly be Mrs. Boom because she wasn't there to open up this new dark fountain. And as far as we know, unless Toriel tells us otherwise, she hasn't by she hasn't been by the Dreamer house anytime recently. However, when you literally lay it all out like I have in writing this video script, it does look like an incredible reach to accuse a character that we haven't even seen yet on screen of being the knight. But that's actually what got me thinking as I started putting things together. Why would anyone within the world of Deltarune suspect her when we haven't even seen her on screen? And we have fans fighting over Gaster, crossover stuff with Undertale, the shipping, crazy death theories, and more. And so the answer could be right under our noses and most people will miss it. And honestly, if it is Mrs. Boom, this is actually excellent writing. If you have an overarching mystery within your story that involves tons and tons of characters, you want to hide your culprit in the middle of the crowd. And at the same time, you need to leave just enough clues that the audience can follow along so that when the reveal comes, they think that it actually makes sense. So you must have this trail of breadcrumbs, leaving all these vague clues, hints, and nods that people can easily apply to various characters, but that all come together at the proper reveal to then make everything make sense. If you can't do that, it just feels like a reveal just came out of left field, and here's your deus ex machina conclusion and solution to the whole problem. And that's what really draws me to Mrs. Boom. It all makes sense that she would have easy access to the last two Dark Found locations. She has a connection to Garrison and to Father Alvin, who have been heavily implied to have journeyed through the Dark World. And she would be old enough to fit the history explained by Sham. And her absence in the central plot of chapter three, or at least so far as I've been able to suppose, would make sense because that chapter is going to be about developing the relationship further between Chris and Susie. It's not going to be story oriented, which the knight is one of those figures within Deltarune who is pushing the plot forward. Now, I could be wrong in all of this, but I am going to put a pin into this particular theory, and I'm going to be keeping an eye out for Mrs. Boom in the future. Now, I did say that I would visit what it would mean for the overall story if Mrs. Boom is indeed the knight. If I am correct, this means that we'll get to see even more troubles within the small town community. Everyone is connected, especially within a small town, and an old, well-connected matriarch would have all the gossip to know how to manipulate events and people, especially the teens. And while a lot of people say that we're definitely going to be going to ICs later on for one of the chapters because there's some weird, creepy shenanigans there, according to Noel, I highly suspect that the town hall and the church will be locations, not just because this is where Father Alvin, the holidays, and the dreamers are all connected, but because Mrs. Boom would have easy access to both of those places. These locations will further reveal the problems within Hometown, its dark history, and unravel a convoluted past between these three families. And that would fit everything that we've seen within Deltarune so far. The characters, because of their interconnected histories, have these very convoluted relationships that we as the players are trying to unknot as we play via Chris. And this ties into Toby's expressed main goal for Deltarune, that we are supposed to become friends with him everyone. Well, there's this weird, crazy past within Hometown that has broken people apart, that has divided people into cliques that they don't need to be in. The teens are supposed to get together as a classroom of friends and have a really strong group, but their past prevents them from doing that. 
Who better to explore that pass through? Who else could be villainous enough to engage in these new events, to get the ball rolling and capitalize on the fracture between these potential heroes than the old Mrs. Boom herself, who knows this town as well as her husband, who knows everyone within it, and who knows as well the secrets of the Dark World. To me, it all makes sense, and i that's why I again feel like this would actually be a really excellent reveal, and tie into so many little things that Toby Fox has been playing around with so far in chapters 1 through 2. This is also why Susie is the real hero of Deltarune, because she's the only person in the entire game able and willing to <laughs> lay down a violent smackdown on an old grandma because of all the crap she's pulled. But tell me what you think about this theory. Again, I'll admit that I could be totally off on this one, but this unseen character just seems to fit too well into the mystery that is unfolding in the background. However, I will appreciate your thoughts, insights, and comments. Please sound off down below. And as you do that, if you're looking for more theories, reviews, and writing insights, please check out our other videos here on our channel, and also head on over to our podcast, Camille's Harem. If you would like to support what we do here, please check out the books that we've published. Links for them are in the description below. And until the next video, y'all, watch out for plotting grandmas and evil librarians. And choose.